now that we have reached the end of the year, it is time to take a step back and take stock of what has happened, not only in Sri Lanka, but all around the world. To put things into perspective, here is the United Nations Review of the Year 2009. 2009. Arctic ice is melting faster than ever before. Amid many other crises, food, energy, recession and pandemic flu, United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon urged the world to take on to the these challenges Nations. together. If ever there were a time to act in a spirit of renewed multilateralism, a moment to create a United Nations of genuine collective action, it is now. There were also signs that the international political climate was changing, as a last remnant of the Cold War was about Please to melt. The Russian Federation and the United States pledged to cut their nuclear arsenals. U.S. President Barack Obama addressed the U.N. Security Council. We will move forward with the ratification of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty and open the door to deeper cuts in our own arsenal. And no matter how great the obstacles may seem, we must never stop our efforts to reduce the weapons of war. Another UN priority in 2009, the fight against world poverty. Financial markets began to recover slowly, but incomes and jobs did not. An estimated 100 million people fell below the poverty line this year, as the near poor became the new poor. One of the major consequences of poverty, instability, posed a challenge in many parts of the globe. In 2009, nearly 120,000 UN peacekeepers were deployed in 17 missions around the world. But the mission in Darfur, Sudan, still lacks critical assets like transport trucks and helicopters. And hundreds of thousands of internally displaced people are still struggling to survive in miserable surroundings. Sexual violence against women continues, but often these crimes are unreported because of the stigma surrounding rape. Female police officers are playing a major role in breaking down these barriers. Lubasi Matakala from Zambia. We come in, try to uh, give them morale and support in all angles of life. And uh, that's why we are here, trying to console the depressed and the oppressed. Meanwhile, in southern Sudan, the world's largest ever disarmament and reintegration program is underway, aiming to help 180,000 ex-combatants return to civilian life. Off the coast of Somalia, pirate attacks more than doubled this year. The Security Council renewed the authorization for states to enter Somalia's territorial waters to fight piracy and armed robbery at sea. In Somalia itself, the recent heavy fighting in Mogadishu has forced over 200,000 people to flee their homes. Under Secretary General for Political Affairs, Lynn Pasco. After years of conflict, peace will not come to Somalia overnight. Stability must be promoted. National and external spoilers must be neutralized. After decades of bloody fighting, the civil war in Sri Lanka is finally over. But thousands of Tamils are still forced to live in camps. In Myanmar, the release of political prisoners fell short of expectations in spite of UN efforts. There should be dialogue with all of the stakeholders in Myanmar. And of course, all political prisoners must be released, including to Aung San Suu Kyi. Meanwhile, refugees have fled Myanmar to makeshift camps in Thailand, where the UN Refugee Agency's Goodwill Ambassador Angelina Jolie visited. Do you have big family for husband, children? Violence in the Middle East continued in 2009. Early in the year, Ban Ki-moon denounced an attack by Israeli forces on a UN compound in Gaza. I'm just appalled. I'm not able to describe how I'm feeling, having seen this site of the bombing of the United Nations compound. Yes. Everyone is now smell, smelling this burning. Still, it is still burning. It is an outrageous and totally unacceptable attack 
against the United Nations. The Secretary General witnessed firsthand the devastation brought about by the Israeli bombardment of Gaza during the three-week war. He also visited a town in Israel which has often been the target of Hamas rockets from Gaza. The UN-backed Goldstone Commission on the Gaza war found evidence that both Israel and Hamas committed serious war crimes and recommended further investigations into the conflict. I wish to live in peace like all children of the world. I wish the war would end and we can go back to school. After the fighting stopped, UNICEF provided essential supplies to children in Gaza. A coup d'etat in Honduras sent President Manuel Zelaya into exile. He addressed the General Assembly by cellular phone, calling for the rule of law to be restored. In Mexico, a flu outbreak quickly crossed borders. The World Health Organization, WHO, declared the first flu pandemic in 41 years as infection rates and panic spread across the globe. WHO worked feverishly to create an H1N1 vaccine. In a gesture of global solidarity, nine countries agreed to make 10% of their vaccine supply available to countries in need. Along with disease, turbulent weather patterns swept across international frontiers. In Afghanistan, seasonal floods destroyed the houses of 100,000 people. And in the Philippines, a series of four major storms sent some 400,000 people running to shelters. Small island countries like the Maldives are especially vulnerable to rising sea levels. In order to raise awareness of the danger his country faces, President Mohammad Nasheed organized an underwater cabinet meeting. If Maldives cannot be saved today, we do not feel that there is much of a chance for the rest of the world. At year's end, the world debated climate change in Copenhagen, and there was growing momentum towards an agreement to slow down global warming. Local action, global cooperation, the keys to tackling the planet's enormous challenges, including climate change, poverty, conflict and disease. In 2009, the United Nations was at the center of that quest to safeguard all our futures. <laughs>